loss for the Tampa Bay Rays. They're third straight now. The Baltimore Orioles of today are not the same Baltimore Orioles of the past, and Rays fans have to acknowledge that. That's a fact. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sembrano. And we're the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making Locked On Rays your very first listen every day. And remember, Locked On Rays is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube at Locked On Rays. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Rays and email us anytime. We are seeking mailbag questions for this week, next week, whenever, really. Uh, Locked On Rays at gmail.com. Also, if you're interested in advertising or being a sponsor with the program, that same email, Locked On Rays at gmail.com. Uh, well, Ulysses, as we alluded to, the Tampa Bay Rays lose game one of a four game set to the Baltimore Orioles by a score of five to one, their third straight loss. And uh, quite frankly, the game should have uh, just should have ended it after the fifth inning. Just said, it said all right, we're going to pack our bags, go home. We're obviously not scoring any more runs or doing any more damage. So let's uh, let's rest the boys for uh, tomorrow evening. Lack of situational hitting. That's what it, that game should have been called. I think the the Orioles got definitely two, but maybe I'm forgetting. And there was a third sacrifice fly. Maybe I'm, but I think there were two for sure on sacrifice flies. That I mean, that's just putting the ball in play right. in, in 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 at the right time in the right situation to do it. Um, the Rays were not able to do that. Uh, the you know missed throws that led a, a run score, um, air mailing uh, throws from the outfield, allowing runners to uh, get another extra 90 feet, just little things like that. It seemed like the the roles were sort of flipped um, when you expect fundamentally good baseball to be played by the race and kind of sloppy uh, by, by the Orioles. It was the opposite yesterday. And um, that's, that's what she wrote, man. I mean, Kluwer wasn't horrible. No, um, it was a that it it was that outing where Kluber is okay because he's Kluber, but right. he doesn't have his stuff. And when that happens, then you can't have uh, the defense do any sort of bad mistakes, or you know the the hitting needs to kind of come clutch. Yeah, and neither came. Death by a thousand singles, I guess, for yeah. the Rays against the Orioles and Corey Kluber. I mean, the Orioles situational hitting, dinking and dunking. And I think that may have been part of the strategy, too, of realizing that Corey Kluber does not allow a lot of home runs. You're playing in a ginormous ballpark as it is. So get on base, lay down a bunt, move the runner over, hit the ball deep into the outfield or as far into the outfield as you can and try to get a run here or there. And that's what... Uh, the Orioles were able to do. The Rays, unfortunately, left 10 men on base and were one for 12 with runners in scoring position. Just that's not going to cut it. That's not going to get it done. Um, yeah, Corey Kluber may have had a so so outing, but uh, uh, as I heard on the put the radio, it's hard to win a baseball game when you only score one run. It is really, really yeah. hard to do that. I know this is a, a pitcher's era. And batting averages are down and at historic lows and so forth. But one run usually doesn't cut it, particularly when you're on the road like you are. Yeah, no. And um, I, I think the, the the trouble with it is getting used to having really good performances by the pitching right. staff that you're like, five runs, what is going on? It's like, no, that can happen. That's that's completely normal. Like that that's that's going to happen to most teams, maybe not the race, but when it does, it should be your hitters that that you know do some damage. We we saw nice um flirtations there uh with with the hitting uh, i think uh luke Rayleigh got a couple doubles uh so that's nice to see let's yeah. see if he can get it going uh randy's supposed to mash at camden yards i like the career numbers there i think they're a bit inflated um yeah. because i don't think he has been that kind of hitter in camden yards this whole season yeah um, and I, I think a couple factors for that the orioles have 
a much better pitching staff than they yes. did of yesteryear. And Camden Yards of 2022 is not Camden Yards of 2021 or previous years by any So means. inflated. Yeah, yes. it, it, they're, they're inflated. Uh, so he did get his 20th stolen base, though. He did, he did get his 20th stolen base. So he very well, I uh, he's got some work to do, but he could be a 2030 guy. He's got 12 homers and 20 stolen bases. I, I, again, 1530 guys more accurate. I don't know. I mean, he could, he could be a 2020 guy. I don't think we should take it out completely. If he goes on a run like he does, and we have seen that happen many times, yes. he could be a 2020 guy, which would be so impressive. At least oh, for I his think franchise. 2030, right? 2030. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, but I'm saying like, if, you know, yeah. I don't, I, I think that's the, that's definitely the bar right now. 2020. Like, I think that's because, you know, he has been getting uh, caught stealing quite a, quite a few times. Um, and I don't think that's going to stop. He's just going right. to run. Um, but I, I, another thing positive a, a, about the game, I, I still like Francisco Mejia's development behind the dish. We saw it yesterday with a with a killer throw to get yes. Cedric Mullins. I mean, he he wasn't getting t uh, t uh, Tony t uh, Taters, right? Uh, right? Anthony Santander. He he was getting Cedric Mullins, and on a pitch that was not easily easy to handle uh, up by, by by the face of the hitter. So like. I think we've seen a couple of, of of those instances with Mejia lately. We saw Corey Kluber mention really nice things about his pitch calling a few starts back. I think you're starting to see the development. It might be very gradual, but I think it is happening. And that's right. that's good to see because uh, as we're going to get into it, uh, catching help is is uh, not coming as, as once we, we thought. That is a very good point. And while we're speaking on positives, I know it's hard to speak on a positive after a 5-1 loss to the Orioles. I mean, we should have just known that this game was not going to be in the Rays favor because Austin Voth was the starting pitcher. It seems like the Rays have an Austin Voth curse whenever he's on the mound. Like can the Rays, I feel like I mentioned it a couple years ago when he was on the nationals. And I said, ah, the Rays should be able to score six or seven off this guy. And I, he, he basically throws a gym. And then I think last month he, he had a, a really good outing or a strong couple of innings against the Rays. So uh, you know, maybe there's something to uh, him going up against the Rays that the Rays can't get over the hump there. But speaking of positives, um, you mentioned Francisco Mejia, uh, Brandon Lau getting his first home run since yes. May 7th. Barely made it over the fence, but it's still a home run. That's okay. It's Camden Yards. It's a different Camden Yards. And then also, I do want to, because this guy has gotten a lot of criticism levied against him, uh, I think we're starting to see a corner being turned with him, Josh Lowe. I think we're starting to see some gradual improvements in his rookie season. He gets a base hit up the middle on a 95 fastball top of the zone, made a really, really excellent catch in uh, right field foul ter territory, and then uh, cannon of an arm, accurate arm, throwing out Jonathan Arauz at second to nab and outfield assist and playing the ball off the Kirim. I mean, those were some really, really heady plays. And if you look at his last 15 games, just offensively speaking, he has a slash line of 255, 317, 418. Again, it's not uh, Juan Soto numbers by any means, but not bad for a rookie that's still trying to find his footing and has, you know, less than 50 games of MLB experience to his belt. The only thing that he should be comparing himself to is himself. Yes. And so when he, he puts those numbers that in the last 15 games, which we have seen the improvement defensively and offensively, when he looks at those numbers, which he might not be one of those guys that, that pay attention to, that pays attention to his own numbers in season, but they kind of know. They, they, they might not know specifically, but they know. It's more of a feel. And so I know he feels way better now, more comfortable now than he did when he was in, in on the opening day a roster and so that's that's the and i think fans should you know go with that mentality too it's like don't compare him to other outfielders like right now is he doing better than his april version and that's all you want to do you want to see some progression and i think you're starting to see it not only with josh Lowe, i think you're starting to see it with taylor walls uh, i think uh taylor's defense has really now we're seeing what the defense is about, which we saw yesterday, plenty uh, last year, plenty of. But yesterday he had a really nice um, 
good looking play. I mean, stuff that's on Sports Center. You know, if if Sports Center gave a damn about baseball, but right. um, no, it, it, you you started to see that progression, and we said that it would take a long time, that we needed to be patient, and maybe now it's going to be happening because it needs to happen because this offense needs some help. Hey, for those keeping score at home, Josh Lowe has more doubles, homers, and RBIs than Austin Meadows. So there you that's go. a win there if you want to look at it from that perspective. Um, what I think the Rays need, man, it'd be great if uh, at the end of the season they were getting a call from BlueNile.com and getting some uh, jewelry. Oh, you know what I'm talking it, about. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, some bling would be nice. And you know what? You could do that with Blue Nile because you can find jewelry as unique as you want it with the modern convenience of online shopping by going to BlueNile.com. Blue Nile has simple online tools that lets you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style for any engagement ring. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft the perfect engagement ring. Each ring is one of a kind. Looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing? Well, that could be you, but it doesn't have to be you. Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7, available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. Make your moments sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile anniversary sale. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. All right, we uh, buttered Rays fans up a little bit talking about or waxing poetic about Josh Lowe, Taylor Walls, Brandon Lau, and Francisco Mejia. Uh, here comes the bad news. We learned that uh, Kevin Kiermeyer and Mike Zanino will not be returning this season as they are undergoing uh, surgeries and repairments for their respective issues. Kevin Kiermeyer, a labrum issue in his left hip, and Mike Zanino, thoracic outlet syndrome issue that he has to get taken care of. So the hits keep coming and not in a good way for the Tampa Bay Rays. No, th this one might not. Um, this one tucks more at the heartstrings than anything. Um, the production, uh, you're going to miss it, but I, I think it's the um, with the Zunino. Let's start with Zunino first. Yeah. Uh, with Big Mike, uh, I think it was if anybody thought then Mike Zunino was going to replicate what he did in 2021, in 2022. Yeah, it's okay. You got to watch more baseball. And that's all right. You just got to watch more baseball. You just got to get a little bit of, of gray in your hair. And that's all right. Because you could tell that was peak Big Mike. That was not going to happen again. Now, the unfortunate side is that the regression just hit all of us, including Mike, yeah. right in the right in the in the kisser i mean he just didn't have it he was just injured man the whole time he was injured and then to be having thoracic outlet syndrome like i have never personally heard of a precision player being diagnosed with tos it's usually just pitchers right. i mean do you remember a position player with tos i can't recall i recall a lot of raised pitchers dealing with that situation now i know that maybe not the same injury per se, but Salvador Perez had Tommy John surgery and then he rediscovered his power stroke even more yeah. so. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, it's not Mike Zanino's throwing arm, is it? Good one. I, I mean, I, that would be more know. understandable again. I, I mean, I'm not looking yeah, at Yeah, I mean, I would uh, think it would I, be I, the I, right I, shoulder. Yeah. Like I, I would get yeah. that. That would make more sense if you're constantly making hard throws and throwing back and forth to the pitcher and catching bullpens. But yeah, still, I, it, it's a, it's a quirky, quirky injury for sure. From it's not the same. It, yeah, it's not the same usage from even as a backstop. It's not the same usage that you get as a, a as a, as a pitcher. So I know it's, it's, it's so regrettable. Um, you. you you know that he's in his last guaranteed year with the Rays. So, do they bring him back? Do you do you roll the dice there? I guess that only depends on how comfortable do you feel with Pinto, Mejia, and Proctor. Those are the three names. Do you feel comfortable with Proctor as your third guy? 
Do you feel comfortable with, with starting the, the, the season with Rene and Mejia? Rene has been fantastic behind the dish. Like as a defensive catcher, all this, all the metrics are there um, to say he is a really good defensive catcher. The hitting tool, we've not seen right. it. We haven't seen it. It's escaped us. I think he has a 38% strikeout rate, which is only second to Brett Phillips' 41%. So just as a measuring tool, not not great with the stick so far, Rene, in in his short time, small sample size, again, with Rene Pinto in the major yeah. league level. But Mejia, we've always liked his bat. We just talked about his progression behind the dish. How comfortable will the race be? Would, they, would the race be as comfortable to say, no, we won't bring Mike in a reduced salary? I, I, I don't know. I think they like his leadership. I think yeah. they like having him in the clubhouse. And I think Mike wants to be back. I think Mike would appreciate rather being back for less money than uprooting his family to Colorado, right. you know, to hit some dingers. Yeah, no, I think in that rapport with the coaching staff and the pitching staff and him being from Cape Coral and going to college at the University of Florida, I think he still has a home up in that area. Like he's got kids. I think it all makes sense that they could work out a team friendly deal laden with incentives, bonuses, put on an option year, work something out. Because again, as I'm going to keep saying this, we, we talked to Cincinnati Red Scout, Charlie Aliano. He said that Mike Zanino has Gary Carter like leadership qualities. You can hit. Oh, 50. If you provide that behind the dish, that and, and on a team dynamic, a team that has so many rookies and young players, that counts for a whole heck of a lot. And that's a good point um, regarding the catcher situation as of right now. Uh, has Christian Bethancourt logged any time at catcher yet? That's I see this. That's how little time he has locked behind the dish that I didn't yeah. even mention him. Yes. Uh, Christian Bethancourt. Yeah. I think he's seen three day, three games behind the dish. If, if, if yeah. I'm, if I'm, if I'm correct, maybe I'm not, but I do think it's less than five, um, which again has been kind of surprising. Um, but look, I, 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 I don't think those names scream at me that the race would be yeah. completely okay with letting Mike Zunino go. Like nobody of those guys, really replaces what they like in Mike Zunino. Oh, 100 percent And what happens if Francisco Mejia goes down? Then you're really, really in trouble. I mean, this year and for the future as well. But if the Rays and Christian Bethencourt, he's he's got MLB experience. He he brings a an interesting tool set to the table. But if the Rays made it known that hey, we're bringing in this guy, we're not doesn't that scream we're not quite yet comfortable with putting Rene Pinto into more MLB action, let alone yeah. Ford Proctor. And who's to say that situation or that viewpoint or thought is going to change six to eight months from now, spring training, no. 2023. So especially because, because look how the Rays utilize their pitchers too. You know, it, it's not just like, it's, it's a different way of being catcher. You really have to be, active behind the dish you have to yeah. really know like 30 pitchers you have to be comfortable with catching a guy that you've never seen before night after night uh you know yeah. it, it seems at times so like that is something that you don't just put all the weight of that into opening day roster here for proctor you're you're our guy next to mejia or you know here bethancourt you're you're our guy with mejia like I don't see that uh, happening. So I, I, I think they, they could roll the dice. And I think Sunino would be okay yeah. with coming back in a, in a reduced salary. But when I mean reduced salary, I think it would be a reduced salary, like $2 million, then plus incentives. Because he just got his yeah. big payday this year with $7 mil. So then you go back, just like they did in 2021. They reduce his, his salary. He comes back. Yeah. But say, hey, you know what? If you hit this many games... Da, 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 da. Right, right. And you can get some another some another prove it deal for all intents yeah. and purposes. And uh, I think that's really critical. And I'd be really interested to see that. What is Mike Zanino's involvement with the team, the pitching staff, the coaching staff and the catching core post surgery or during this process? Is he still allowed to be around the clubhouse and provide 
advice and mentorship to Francisco Mejia and Christian Bethencourt and others like that, that counts for a whole heck of a lot too. I, I I'm wondering how he'll, you know, how much he'll be around the ball club if he's allowed to be around the ball club. But if, um, if he, if he is, I think that would be a tremendous opportunity for all of those guys to hear from Mike. And, you know, you see him in the clubhouse uh, during the game um, and, and the dugout, you know, at, at least Tyler Glass now and Brandon Lau yeah. when he was hurt. So hopefully, you know, you, you can also see Big Mike supporting the guys and, and giving them a little bit of uh, tips here and there. Uh, Mike Zanino, before we have to move on to Kevin Kiermeyer as well in the third segment, Mike Zanino, will he be on the team? in 2023 yes or no i don't feel comfortable or signed to a contract by the rays for 20 i think i think so i think so yeah, yeah I, I think so. i think so as well yeah. all right uh next up on the uh injured list agenda is kevin Kiermeyer. but before we tell you and get into that uh, we have to tell you about the sports card investor app the sports card investor app is the hobby's most powerful resource you can quickly check the value of your favorite cards find great deals and profit from the hobby you love available completely free in the google play and apple app stores the sports card investor app is a must-have for baseball fans so download the sports card investor app today available for free in the Google Play and Apple App Stores, or go to sportscardinvestor.com slash locked on. Again, that is sportscardinvestor.com slash locked on. All right, Ulysses, uh, next up, Kevin Kiermeyer. And before we, you know what, I'm just going to ask you right here. Is this the last time we've seen Kevin Kiermeyer in a Rays uniform, at least for you know, until he does his uh, retirement tour, maybe, you know, three, four or five years from now, will he be on the raise in 2023? I put up a tweet yesterday saying we have not seen the last of Kevin Kiermaier in a raise uniform. And I had a whole bunch of responses. Some people saying this is a terrible tweet to so people are saying, don't give me hope. Uh, uh, I would love that. Some people saying, I hope not. You know, it was all over the place. Yeah. And that's how uh, controversial <laughs> Kevin Kiermaier has been in in his um, in his stay with the with the yeah. Rays for 10 seasons. I mean, it, it's been really controversial because of the injuries being so prevalent in his career and then the bat not playing as much as you would like it to have played. But guys. Like let's now that we if we can just look at Kevin Kiermaier as a whole, just taking OPS plus, he's at 98 in for his career. That OPS plus on base plus slugging, because of the plus, it's normalizing that number throughout the league. Yeah. And counting external factors such as you know different ballparks, so everybody's on that same metric, 98. So you're t so. That's number one, right? 98. So that means he's two percentage points below the average production offensively on, on that metric. Yeah. And, and that's for all position players. That's not just center fielders because we also yes. have to keep this in mind. Center fielders traditionally don't aren't putting up great, great offensive numbers. I would like to see what the average OPS plus for center fielders is compared to first baseman or third Correct. baseman or corner outfielder or DH. Correct. So thank you for that addition. So then you once you take that offensive part, then you know if you're a Rays fan and you have seen Kevin Kiermaier play defense since 2014, actually one game in 2013 for all, all of us OG people here. Um, he has been, if not the best, podium. But I think he's the best defensive only center fielder since 2014. Since making his debut, nobody has, has touched his, his his ability. I mean, it's not going over the fence, armpit high. It's not the 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 quick sprint speed to his left, to his right. The diving abilities, the diving up and abilities, the diving diagonally uh, yeah. abilities behind the pitchers, uh, going in and 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 making diving. Uh, uh, shoelace catches. It's also the the, the strong throws um, uh, to home plate, to to second base, to third base. Uh, it, it, it's it's the relays that you could see it on the on the on the biggest 
platform that this sport has in the playoffs uh, mm -hmm. uh, to to keep the the, the score um, in, in their favor. It's the clutch. I mean, when you put all of the defensive things that he has done, and then you look at the two percent below, he's giving you above average production as an overall player than so many other players than so many other players yeah. and then you add the financials on, on top of that and that team friendly deal that he signed my goodness he has been a steal he has been a steal so i understand the frustration that comes with him and the injuries and maybe the, the lack of hitting but the lack of hitting has to be a little bit um put into a microscope here and 98 ops plus is just barely below average just barely for yeah. all positions kevin so i think that that uh that dog whistle that has been uh permeating around kevin kiermaier's career of like oh he's a poor hitter he's a poor hitter it doesn't it's it's not that true it's not that true yeah, I mean, if you look at his career line, 248 batting average, 715 OPS. You mentioned the OPS plus. I'll take that for a center fielder. Absolutely. And at this point in this era of baseball, you'll take that for just about everybody. I would love to see what the the average OPS across baseball. I mean, the Rays are, you know, signing guys uh, off the waiver wire who have, you know, 560 career OPSs. And, you know, I know that, and we've talked about the the injury history uh, the multitude of issues and setbacks that Kevin Kiermeyer's had over his career. Part of that is his aggressive go all out nature, but we also have to look at the elephant in the room, the trop turf playing as many yeah. games as you do at the trop has to be taxing. It's, it's taken many guys out with many fewer games on that, uh, on that surface there. So it's almost, um, I, we obviously can't do this, but I would love to, put together an experiment to see how much more productive <laughs> offensively and defensively and how much more he would be able to stay healthy if he was playing at a more traditional ballpark that didn't have those surface dimensions. And don't take it from two dudes uh, recording at 7.30 in the morning in front yeah. of two microphones. Take it from all perennial all-star Carl Crawford, who said in many interviews – yeah, that turf at in, in, in at the trop killed my knees. Like that's Those a are knees at three. I mean, Aaron Judge can't even play a, a four game series on that this, turf. Exactly. So I mean, what Kevin Kiermaier has done is just beyond incredible. I think the 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 the, the hate comes from a uh, a wanting to see him do better because of expectations. And right. but honestly, what what Kevin has done um, for for the Rays fandom and just providing so many highlight and I'm so many highlights in, 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 in defense, but Kevin, that clutch, I know analytics guys, yeah. uh, uh, you know, clasp your, your, your hands to your ears and, and don't hear this word, this dirty word clutch clutch. I mean, we, we saw it yesterday. Kiermaier we couldn't buy a sack fly. The Rays couldn't buy a sack fly. Maybe part of that is because Kevin Kiermaier is out. Manny Margo is out. Mondor Franco is out. Harold Ramirez is out. Just saying. Yeah, but but cl clutching the big moments, like coming yeah. through in the World Series with a big bomb, coming through with a relay in in in, in the ALDS in in 2019, coming through with multiple catches in the ALCS in 2020. Uh, th this is a guy that, when the moment was big, so many walk offs uh, from Kevin Kiermaier. I mean, this guy just really shined when the when the lights were brightest, man. And it's gonna be a shame. To not uh, have him uh, be active, I do think that just like I said it with Mike Zunino, I think if you put a list of players that are not from the Tampa Bay area that have marketed the Tampa Bay area the most, Longo and Kevin Kiermaier would be there. Yeah. Um, let's be honest, and I mentioned this in our recording with Evan Klosky a week ago. Look at the numbers. Kevin Kiermeyer might be one of the greatest players of all time to not make an all-star appearance. He's already going to go down as one of the greatest position players in Rays history. I'm looking at the war leaderboards right now. Evan Longoria, number one. Carl Crawford, number two. Ben Zobrist, number three. Kevin Kiermeyer, not that far off from Ben Zobrist at number, uh, number four, 31.6. 
career war. Yeah. That, that is an incredible, incredible career. If he doesn't play another major league game, he can sit at home on his millions, happy and satisfied, but something tells me he's got a, and, and will have a little bit left in the tank, which brings me to my next question. Do you think that you, you say that we have not seen the last of Kevin Kiermeyer? Have we seen the last, last of Kevin Kiermeyer in a raised uniform? Have we seen the last of Kevin Kiermeyer winning a gold glove? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know how many, you know, 32 year old and above center fielders can, 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 can put up uh, right. golden glo gold glove numbers. But yeah, I, I don't know if it's going to be next season as soon as that, but, or maybe as, as a return uh, to, to the trop, like three years after he spends, yeah. I don't know, let's, let's use Colorado this, this, this episode, and, you know, he uses three, three years in Colorado. I don't know. Um, but I do think that, he would come he would come back he, even as soon as i know people are like all oh, the glut they they sign Margot. like there's so many people in the outfield like you know trades happen right you, you know, know injuries, injuries happen, happen right like it's not like and like if you don't know injuries happen are you watching this season you're just completely set like with with the outfield just like it is like no you need more numbers and again just like mike zunino i think kevin kiermaier would take a deal for way way less yeah. money to stay with the Rays, know that he's going to be maybe not even the top three outfielder. Maybe he has to take a reserve outfielder spot because, uh, you know, things are just the way that they yeah. are. He, he's not peak Kiermaier anymore. But I think he would be okay with that because he loves the organization. He loves the area. My God, have you seen a bigger Tampa Bay Lightning fan than Kevin Kiermaier? Like, people right. that are from Tampa Bay that really like hockey are not as fans of, uh, of the Lightning as he is. Yeah, and glut on the roster, I get there's the 40-man roster crunch with prospects and so forth, but uh, let's look at the 26-man roster right now, outfielders. Luke Rayleigh, Roman Quinn, Brett Phillips in his 480 OPS. I don't think all three of those guys are returning in 2023. No. I think there can be a spot made and salvaged for Kevin Kiermaier, even with Manny Mark. Uh, many more go coming back, even with those yeah. other injured guys coming back. So uh, something tells me that it will get worked out one way or the other. So um, just want to throw that out there and and put that into context. Uh, one last thing here. Let's do a, let's do an injury roll call. Uh, Nick Anderson, Shane Boz, Jalen Beeks, JT Chagua, Yanni Chirinos, JP Fireeyes, and this is an alphabetical order, by the way, last names. Josh Fleming, Tyler Glasnow, Andrew Kittridge, Brendan McKay, Mike Zanino. Oh, maybe it's not an alphabetical order all the way. Andre Franco, Harold Ramirez, Kevin Kiermeyer, Manny Margot. It's a Ooh. whole team. It's a whole team. There's a, there's all stars. There's a whole bullpen. There's like a starting yeah. rotation. That's it's a whole ridiculous. NBA roster too. Yeah, it's like a, a whole roster bench G League team. Unreal. Crazy. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. All right. Hopefully, uh, I mean, Shane McClanahan's on the mound tonight. So that's your stopper. When you have you a, a losing streak, that's your stopper right there. Uh, thank you for making the Locked on Rays podcast your very first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked on MLB Prospects podcast. That is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you on Wednesday.